God. Oh, the humility of Jesus. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. It's all about your love this evening, O oh God. Oh, we could sing of your love. We could sing of your mercy.
in your heart. Set your focus right. So Lord, I'm not going to leave this place without worshipping you, without giving you the honor, the praise, the worship that is due, O oh God. I recall to myself that I was made to worship you.
gives up on you. That is the love of Jesus Christ. Oh, we worship you. Somebody lift up that voice. Tell them, Lord, I'm here to worship you beyond the song that is offered. I'm here to worship you beyond where the music can take me. Holy Spirit of God, consume me with your words. Consume me, Lord, with the passion. Hallelujah, hallelujah. one voice and our song this evening is just the name of Jesus be glorified in our worship in Jesus name we pray Amen, amen. everybody say a louder Amen Amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah oh your hallelujah needs some uh, what is it called ORS or glucose something it needs hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, our, we don't worship a God uh, who is going to die tomorrow he's forever alive he's forever alive Amen. Even when Jesus died, the word of God says that he went to the depths and he preached there three days. Oh, God can never disappear. He, he can, you know, David says, even if I go to hell, Lord, I know you. Even if I make my bed, I put one curl on pillow. If I try to sleep, I know I'm not alone. He's always with me. Hallelujah. 
Oh, what kind of a God we serve? We, we serve a God who never gives up on us. Thank you. Who never gives up on us. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Give them a smile. Tell them, don't be sad. Ah, don't be sad. We're not, we're not, doing, we're not doing a burial service here. <laughs> because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean, and we lift you up, with songs of freedom, forever we change, because of your love. See, the thing is, there's a verse in the Bible that says, when the trumpet blows, God gives a command, when the trumpet blows, the tribe of Judah is supposed to advance forward. This music is only a trumpet. It cannot advance for you. Your voice, your shout, your praise, everything has to go ahead. Overtake all of these noises. Or, I mean, we're not doing noises. I'm not talking about you. Okay. All these sound frequencies and go to the throne of grace and say, Lord, I have my worship from my heart. Hallelujah. We want to teach you this wonderful uh, chorus that we just sang. Somebody say, because of your love. Because of your love, our hearts are clean, our hearts are clean, oh yes. and we lift you up with songs of freedom, forever we change, because of your love, I'm going to give you a second chance, you can try and do better, because of your love. And we lift you up with songs of freedom forever, forever we change. Put your hands together. Can I have some keyboard on the bottom? I don't 
know we messed up this song. We will do this better. Very sweet. Master, don't do all this to me. Amen? But if we only know the revelation behind what was done. And then he agreed, yes Lord, this is not about me, this is about you. Yes Lord, yes Lord. In essence, Peter was trying to say, Lord, whatever you want to do, you can do to me, through me. Hallelujah. We have that as a song this evening. If you're not aware of the song, if this is a new song, learn with us and sing. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say.
of deliverance this is your night of deliverance this is your night of deliverance hallelujah you're going to glorify the name of our Lord Jesus amen thank you father for your presence blessed be your name In Jesus mighty name we offer up this worship offer up our praises 
be lifted up, be honored, be adored by your people, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, I want you to look at someone and say, this is your night of deliverance. Hallelujah. Everyone who has come here today, it is a divine appointment for your deliverance. Hallelujah. This is a night of deliverance. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. A night of deliverance. In fact, it is the night of the judgment over your enemy. Amen. It's a night of judgment over your enemy. That enemy could be anything. Could be people. Could be something, some situation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What's that funny sound? <laughs> system? Okay. We forgive the system. Because tonight is all about forgiveness <laughs> as well. Hallelujah. Quickly let me take you into what we are observing tonight. This is the Holy Week as you know. Where the whole ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ comes to an end. Last Sunday we observed um, the Palm Sunday. Which is the entry of Christ into Jerusalem. And he enters into Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Three times Jesus enters into Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. It's very vividly written. Very clearly, very specifically written in the Gospels. Every time Jesus used to go to Jerusalem, he used to write, he was going up to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast. To celebrate Passover. To celebrate the feast of unleavened bread. These are all same things. It's the same festival which has multiple names, different, different names over the years. Okay? The final time or the third time Jesus goes, because this is a yearly festival, right? So first year he went, second year he went, and third year he goes as the last entry. Why? Because he never comes down. From there he is taken to Calvary. All right? So this time around, when he goes to Jerusalem, he goes to the temple, he is preaching, he is healing the sick. And the Pharisees have already been heated up. They are very angry about Jesus, about his sermon, about his teachings, about his message, and about his miracles. They were very upset with him. And they began to plot. But now, the third time when Jesus goes to the feast, now they are for sure they are going to kill him. They are sure that they are going to destroy him. And Jesus also knew it. He also knew it. Hallelujah. So he goes around and that entry into Jerusalem itself, the people have a different welcome. We saw that on Sunday. They begin to treat him like a king. And welcome him like a king. And Jesus enters. Now he knows the prophecy is going to be fulfilled. He has to go through and become the lamb of God. He has to become the sacrifice for all men. Hallelujah. So he's ready. And few days goes by. And he's still preaching in the synagogues and places. And finally the Passover night is at hand. Or the festival night has come. This Passover is a very important festival in the Bible. Okay? Before I go to explain what Passover is all about, let me first narrate the story of our Lord Jesus. So he celebrates that Passover night. Usually a Passover festival was celebrated with a meal. It's a very specific meal. Okay? Very specific meal. I'll go to the full story today and I'm going to show you how your deliverance is hidden in that meal. 
Amen. How our deliverance is in that meal. Now, Jesus said to his disciples, go and there will be a room prepared for us. He tells his disciples, you will go this way, go to this particular place and there will be an upper room prepared for us. Just tell the man, the master needs the room for Passover night. Hallelujah. One more important thing, this Passover meal happens to be a dinner. It happens to be a supper. Supper means dinner. Okay? So this is something that happens in the night. Alright? So the meal, the table was made ready. Now the menu of this particular Passover is fixed in the Bible. Okay? There is a particular menu that's fixed in the Bible. Every time, every year, they will have the same items on the table. Okay? And this is supposed to be done, this meal is supposed to be done every house. In every house, the family has to do it. There is a particular order how this meal has to be made and eaten. And there is a particular time in which it has to be eaten. There is a particular way it has to be eaten. Okay, now Jesus told his disciples, we are going to also celebrate this Passover night. So go get that room ready. And according to the instruction of Jesus, that room was there. Somebody had prepared the table. Wow, this is like James Bond. Sometimes Jesus is like James Bond. He just tells, go do this and that and everything is ready there. <laughs> the power of prophetic. Amen. Prophetic. Hallelujah. So, when they all sat to have their festival meal, the Passover meal, which they have done the previous years also, which they have done in their homes. When Jesus was growing as a child with Mary and Joseph, they used to have a Passover meal every Passover. It's not a new thing. Every Israelite, a Jew knows about this festival. They can't miss it. It's like Christmas for Christians. Alright? So, it's not a new thing. Now, they're all ready to have that Passover. Jesus already had two Passover nights with his own disciples. They have eaten it. They have celebrated the Passover. And they have gone. But this time around, Jesus took the bread and then he broke it and he said, this is my body. Hallelujah. And he took the cup of wine and he said, this is my own blood. Wow. That's shocking now. Because he didn't say that in the previous years. And they were shocked. Because in Jewish custom, one of the laws of God is you shall not eat blood. Yeah, it's one of the laws. Blood, when they cut the chicken, they should make sure all the blood is washed off. If even a drop of blood they consume by even by mistake, they become unclean. It's in the law of God. They have to be very careful. Any meat, fish, whatever, there should not be blood in it. So, now it's a hard thing for his disciples to believe and consume it as his blood. He's giving it to them. He's giving the cup to everyone saying, this is my blood, sip of it. It's a hard thing for them to do. Hallelujah. Are you seeing something? So after that, Jesus, they finished the supper and he steps down out of the chair, takes a bowl, fills it with water, takes a towel, he grids his robe, kneels down, and begins to wash his disciples' feet. Now they freak out. They say, Lord, no, 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 no. Peter says, no, I will not allow you to touch, Lord. You know, Peter is the one who always speaks 
<laughs> more. <laughs> so I will not allow you to touch, Lord. And the Lord said, if you don't let me touch you, wash you, you have no part with me. You have no part with me. He said, then wash my head also, wash my hands also. <laughs> Peter, as he is, you know, <laughs> speaks extra all the time. Jesus said, he gives an explanation. He said, you don't need to be washed head and hands. Only feet. He washes them. And then he institutes, sorry, um, yeah. He declares to them two important things on this night, which we call the Passover night, or in our terms, in biblical terms, is the Last Supper. Hallelujah. So Jesus has that Passover with them, and he calls that meal, that food, as himself, his flesh and blood. And he tells them, eat of it and drink of it. Do this in remembrance of me. And then Jesus also says, this is the last meal I'll be having. And after that, I will be in the kingdom of God. My next meal is in the kingdom. So what happens, this, uh, say, on modern calendar perspective, it's a Thursday night. Okay? But originally in Israel, the days are different. But let's just hold on to today's calendar. The Thursday night is the Passover night where they're having Passover meal. And suddenly Jesus changed the whole thing. He said, it's my own body and blood. He gets down, washes their feet, and all of it is done. Jesus says, let's go out and pray. Let's go out and pray. And one among the disciples quickly leaves all of them. And he goes away to betray Jesus. Jesus goes with his 11 disciples to Gethsemane, a garden nearby in Jerusalem. And he begins to pray as he knows what is about to happen in the next few hours. He knows the hour has come for him to be crucified, for him to be given as the sacrifice for the whole world. He's getting ready. Probably the disciples have no idea because they, you know, Jesus has been telling, but they have no idea that day has come upon them. Right? They are still guessing. They are still like, they haven't understood it. But Jesus goes down to get some money and begins to pray hard because he is just a man. When he was born in Bethlehem as a little baby, he wrote off in heaven saying, this is the last day I'm going to be God. I'm leaving this forever. Did you know the greatest sacrifice Jesus did is not on the cross. It is when he left heaven for you and me. He had to write off permanently, no more God, just a man. He had to leave his Godhood. Leave it. Most Christians still think Jesus was a superman undercover. Oh, he is son of God. He can do it. No. The first sacrifice Jesus did, he left his God power, came as a normal man. That is why Joseph had to take him and run for safety. The baby couldn't save it himself. Hallelujah. Many times they come to kill him, he escapes. Why? They would have killed him before he completed his mission. Jesus didn't, you know what I mean? Jesus was just a human being filled with the Holy Spirit and showed us what you and I can do with the same Holy Spirit. He became the model son. Amen. Praise God. Now listen, in Gethsemane is praying hard so much so out of fear, instead of sweat, blood began to ooze out. Okay? And the angel of the Lord comes by to strengthen Jesus. Amen? Strengthen Jesus. And in a few hours, Judas has come with 
people. Soldiers have come. And they are asking this guy, show us who your master is. This guy comes, gives, hugs Jesus, give, gives a kiss on his cheek. Say, Master, good evening. And Jesus Christ immediately. So you betray with a kiss. Because it's prophecies, everything is written by the prophets. He says, the moment Jesus says that, this man's heart breaks. Oh, I have done it. I have done it. He throws the money, he runs away from there. And Jesus is arrested that night and taken into custody. And this is night. So the following day is where the judgment is going to happen. They're going to judge him. The high priest will come and the governor will come. The rulers will come. Leaders will come. And the public will come. And they're going to accuse Jesus and they're going to judge him on the following day. We call it the Good Friday. And the judgment is given and he is taken to carry the cross and to be crucified by the people. Hallelujah. Now, let me take you into a very, very powerful point. Someone say, judgment on the enemy. Judgment on the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Literally, more than a thousand years ago, a thousand, a few thousand, maybe two thousand plus years ago, something is happening in Egypt. You all know the story that Israel, which was, as a small family, entered into Egypt during famine. And there they began to grow and stay, live for 400 plus years. In 400 years time, they have become a great nation. Okay? Great big nation. The Egyptians suddenly got scared. They said, no, 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 no. These people may overtake us and take the kingdom from our hands. So let us begin to treat them like slaves. You know? And Israel was being oppressed, being oppressed, being oppressed. Now God appeared to Moses. This is after 400 years. God selects a man called Moses. I'm not going into the whole story. You all know the story. God chooses Moses and sends Moses to bring these Israelites out of Egypt into a new land, a new country, a place God is going to give to Israel. Okay? And establish them as a nation. But suddenly, there was a problem. What is a problem? This king of Egypt, who's, who has a, a very unique title, it's called Pharaoh. The kings of Egypt are called as Pharaoh. Like in other kingdoms, they're called as sultans. Other kingdoms, they have different title for the king. In Egypt, the kings are called as Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was a wicked man. Okay? Now, their problem was, these people are in our country. They are not our people. What if they overtake us? What if they take the kingdom from us? All of that. Now, well, Moses comes and says, Sir, we would like to leave this country. We would like to go away from here. And go worship our God and do our stuff. Would you please allow us to go? Pharaoh says, no. Suddenly, he says, no going anywhere. You are my slave. Now that is a problem. Hallelujah. God had a big plan already. Revealed everything to Moses. It was all told in advance what is about to happen God told Moses this fellow will not leave so easily I'm going to do a few miracles through your hands and a few judgments are going to come upon this Egypt and then he will let you go so many such events happen and the final one 
was called the Passover night. Hallelujah. The final judgment that God is going to pour out on Egypt was called Passover night. We read this in Exodus chapter 12. Okay. So many such wonders and judgments have already happened. In fact, nine wonders and judgment has happened in Egypt. Egypt was already like a war zone where people have died, cattle have died, river is turned into blood. It's now chaotic. By now, this fellow, Pharaoh, should have told, please take your people and leave us alone. You guys are destroying us. Okay? But this guy was not budging. He was not changing his mind. His heart was hardened. He would never let them go. Now this whole Egypt and Israel is a model story of God's family and Satan. Hallelujah. How God's family was sent into the world and how Satan began to enslave them now refusing his people to go into salvation, refusing them to go into blessing, refusing to let God's family go. That's the picture of Egypt and Israel. Moses takes the picture of Jesus, the Savior who came to save his people. Amen. That's the whole picture. Hallelujah. But in Exodus 12, God comes to Moses and gives him the final wonder or judgment he's going to speak over Egypt. And God said, with this one, Pharaoh will let you go. What was it? This was, this was amazing. A very different instruction. So far, all the, all the instructions were very different. God would tell Moses, go take that staff, that rod that God gave in his hand. Show it towards the heavens and suddenly locusts will come. He will say, go show it towards the river. It will turn into blood. But this time the instruction was peculiar, very different. God told Moses, call the whole assembly of Israel. There are 20 lakh people plus. He said, call them all and instruct them. What is the instruction? Each family has to get one lamb. Alright? One lamb to represent their family. And the lamb had to be spotless, without blemish, and no corruption in it. Not, no broken feet, you know, no cut in the body. They had to be without blemish. Okay? You know the story. So, and the instruction said, God said, tonight, I'm taking you out of Egypt. Okay? So what are you going to do? Each family must follow the instruction very tight. It has to be very accurate. What are, what are they supposed to do? He said, they must take the lamb. The head of the family will take the lamb and examine it first. That it is worthy to be slaughtered. Okay? Then he cuts the lamb and takes some of the blood of that lamb and goes and applies that blood on the doorpost. Okay? Instruction number two. Once the blood is put on the doorpost, the family is not allowed to step out. That family will sit inside. Okay? So meanwhile, imagine if this whole process starts about in the evening. Say by sunset, they cut the lamb, they take the blood and put it on the doorpost. Now what are they supposed to do? They are supposed to boil that lamb and cook it. Okay? Boil the lamb, cook it. And that cooked meat will be set on the dining table. Okay? Then there are a few other items. One is a hyssop. Okay, which is a 
leaf which is very bitter to taste okay part of that and then unleavened bread bread that is made without yeast okay each thing has a meaning to it all right why that bitter leaf they are supposed to eat okay each thing has a meaning we will not deep dive into all of this let's go to the most powerful one so that lamb which is cut for each family is a representation of jesus hallelujah that's jesus and the blood they put on the doorpost is the blood of jesus okay jesus christ is the lamb of god now even before jesus came god instituted the shadow of jesus okay he said the real jesus will come one day but today do the representation of jesus okay so they eat this dinner and god had told them in a specific way you will eat what's that specific way they have to hold their their belt and eat it saying we are in a hurry to leave okay lot of instructions beautiful very prophetic right prophetic god so they eat in haste they eat in haste and god is going to tell moses when they all can come out and leave okay but watch what's happening while they are busy with the cooking of the passover meal and by the time meal is ready in every house they're all ready to have their first passover night meal it's like a feast this whole of israel people lived in a separate area called goshan okay it's a separate area only they used, only israelites lived there so imagine in this goshan it's like festival big festival everybody cutting you know a lamb cooking outside their house and you know everybody you know jolly mood now by the time the dinner was ready they are all assembled heavily focused on the instructions moses has given nobody wants to break anything he said you know they've already seen so many destructions <laughs> so they are doing just like that they are sitting and eating a tasty lamb you know enjoying a meal and don't know what next would happen but on the other side in egypt the death angel was released and this death angel was told to go into every house and destroy the first born okay destroy the first born destroy who the first born once again destroy the first born now they have no idea that they are enjoying this meal okay with the family it's a new instruction but nice this is like a biryani nice they are all having lamb grill super tasty they are all eating but on the other side there was crying and wailing because in egypt in every house there was one death even the cattle the first born dead okay so that side in egypt there is death in every house judgment has come and wailing and crying and going mad even in the palace the king's first born dead hallelujah but see the death angel it's a very mysterious thing god said apply the blood where on the door post because if the blood is not there this angel will come into israel also he is just a destroyer angel see egyptians were not destroyed because they are wicked israelites were not spared because they were holy
<laughs> Israelites were not spared because they are holy. Egyptians were not killed because they were wicked. I will put enmity between your seed and my seed. For God, it is about His seed and the serpent seed. Hallelujah. It's about whose seed. Amen. That's why he said, you may be my children. You are not holy. Okay? The death angel will eat you if he sees you. Put the blood on the door. Because when the death angel comes, he sees on your behalf, Christ died. He will see Christ dead on your behalf and go to the next house. Hallelujah. That's why we call it the judgment night. Amen. This was judgment over the enemies. Judgment over the enemy. Pharaoh in the Bible takes the picture of Satan. Do you understand it? Takes the picture of Satan. Hallelujah. Takes the picture of Satan. But when in the Garden of Eden, God judges the serpent and Eve and Adam, what does he say? Let's have the scripture, if possible. That I will put enmity between you and the woman. Between your seed and the woman's seed. Hallelujah. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Okay. Now see, between your seed and her seed. Hallelujah. So on the judgment night, who did God kill? Pharaoh or his seed? Hallelujah. Who did God destroy? The seed. Amen. He destroyed the seed. Thank you, Jesus. This is very prophetic. Very prophetic. Because it's not about Israel and Egypt. It's a story of the world. Satan, God and his people. All right. It's a big picture. Anyway, so Israel on the other hand, having Passover meal. And while they're having their Passover meal, the enemy was judged. The enemy was destroyed. Let me take you to Exodus 12 and show you some more. Are you with me? Okay, let's go to verse 29. Let's read from 29 onwards. Watch this. Exodus 12, 29 onwards. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night he, all his servants, and all Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. And take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone. Hallelujah. Be gone. But you know, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. Right after Moses calls, see, they were all eating the meal. But he was called by who? Pharaoh calls Moses, saying, take your people and go. I'm done. This is over. Please, please, take everything. All that, even you want to carry the house, you go. Take it and go. Leave. So Moses comes with the good news. Because God had instructed what? Today, tonight, you will leave Egypt. And Moses called and said what? 
Moses was told what? By Pharaoh, take your people and leave. Moses comes into Goshen and he says, Pharaoh has told us to leave. Come on, let's celebrate, pack up, leave. And people leave. And imagine, it's not an ordinary thing for people, 20 lakh people to start a journey. All right? It's like five acre land moving somewhere. If you look at the people like a carpet, it's like some five acres is simply moving like this, like honeybee, you know. So they are moving, they have moved and they left the country, they are in the outskirts, skirting the borders and planning their way out. Now Moses has to give address. Where are we going? They're all looking to Moses. Moses, see, we have obeyed till now, everything is ready. Uh, let's go. We are following you. But hey, Moses. Uh, my, my wife just asked, where are we going? <laughs> Moses is like, hold on, boss, wait. I have to get my email still. <laughs> you know, we are waiting for the address. So they are going. They just left. They are on the highway, leaving the nation. But suddenly news comes. Pharaoh is very upset and he is coming with his army to kill all of us. Okay? That fellow's mind is like that. He doesn't give up. So what he does, he packs his army. He wants to take a revenge. You, you people, you did some witchcraft and all our firstborn is dead. You think we will leave you like that? We are coming to kill you. Okay? So they are after with their armies and chariots and whole of the army with the king coming to destroy the whole gathering of Israel. Now they were all cornered at the Red Sea. One side sea and people are at the sea. Now behind the armies had come with Pharaoh. And you know what happened that night. What happened that night? God opened the Red Sea. Hallelujah. And took them through that Red Sea. And Pharaoh even looking the raw miracle of God, he was so stubborn, so hard-hearted that he said, I don't care. These walls are standing, these walls of water, but I'm going to go through and kill them. I, you know, some people never learn. <laughs> so he goes in, and when the last man from Israel had crossed into the land, God closed the waters and that night Pharaoh and his army, his chariots were all drowned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means that night God overthrew Egypt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Single handedly he destroyed Egypt. He destroyed Egypt. He destroyed Egypt. And that night, Moses was instructed by God, every year, you will celebrate this Passover night. Every year, you will celebrate the deliverance I gave you. Every year, you will celebrate the judgment I judged your enemies. So every year, Israel will come and hold Passover. They will put the same dining table. They will kill a lamb. They'll cook that lamb. They'll have the bread and all these things, fancy items on the table. It's a celebration for Israel. They call it Passover. So two times Jesus already celebrated his Passover. But the third year of his ministry, he knew in his heart that his time has come to go up on the cross. And again, there is another Passover festival and Jesus says, let's enter into Jerusalem. Because that's where it is celebrated. Okay. Later on, over the years, there are many alterations. Okay. So now they celebrate it in Jerusalem. Usually people from around the world, Jewish people who probably have gone as merchants, settled in other nations. But when it's Passover time, they will come down to Jerusalem. They will stay there. Hallelujah. And they will celebrate in the land. They will do all of this. There is more to that festival. So when this
Passover dinner was arranged for Jesus and his disciples. Suddenly Jesus took that bread and he said what? Amen. Can we have the bread? Please bring it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So now we are going to enter into the Passover meal. Hallelujah. We are going to celebrate the Last Supper. And remember, the Last Supper, the Passover meal, represents the destruction of your enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. This is an appointed night for all of us. Appointed night. Appointed night. Hallelujah. Did you see that bread? Amen. Try to make it like the unleavened bread. Look at that. All right. And this is some goat blood. No, sorry. <laughs> Listen, hallelujah. So Jesus, on that night, when they were celebrating Passover, they were supposed to have a Passover meal. And remember how God delivered Israel from the hand of Egypt and Pharaoh. But instead of saying that, Jesus said a different thing that night. He took the bread and he said, This is my body which is broken for you. Hallelujah. Amen. He took the cup and said, This is my blood that I've shed for you. And Jesus did one more thing. He said, This is the blood of the new covenant hallelujah clap your hands for jesus now this passover night was not an ordinary night this was the night where the new covenant was instituted by jesus christ hallelujah there was inauguration of new covenant amen Thank God we don't belong to the old covenant. Teeth for teeth, eye for eye. The moment you steal something, they'll cut your hand, hang it in the road corner, just like how they still do it in Arab world. Thank God. But the new covenant speaks mercy. It speaks mercy. It speaks forgiveness. It speaks compassion. It speaks long-suffering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the lamb that they cut was the lamb of God, Jesus Christ. So, when he knew his hour has come to go upon the cross and die for humanity, Jesus immediately said, This is my body. You will not eat a lamb anymore. I am that lamb. Therefore, you will eat my body and drink of my blood hallelujah but on the passover night they used to eat that lamb the flesh of the lamb but jesus said no more flesh of the lamb that lamb didn't die for you i am dying for you on the cross amen hallelujah so we are going to participate in the passover night in the last supper right now all right thank you jesus Watch this. People online as well, you are free to imitate us. No, that's okay. Free to imitate us. Take bread or biscuit, whatever that you can represent the body of Christ and juice or tea or water that can represent the blood of Jesus Christ. So on that night, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. Hallelujah. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took the cup in his hand and said, this is my blood. The blood I have shed for the remissions of sins. This is the blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me did he not say the passover in remembrance every year you will have a passover and jesus gave himself he said do this in remembrance 
of me but what is the significance tonight is a different night bring in the passover meal please hallelujah bring in the passover meal and distribute it thank you jesus you're going to hold this bread in your hand and this grape juice in your hand but something supernatural is going to happen now so i want you to stir up your heart stir up your spirit because something supernatural is going to happen right now are you there as you're receiving the articles hold them with you but keep your ears sharp listen to me as we begin to eat the meal tonight your enemies are falling this is the prophetic word if that enemy is a sickness it's going to fall to death if that enemy is death it's going to fall to death hallelujah if the enemy is troubles it's going to fall to death amen fall to death is it a court case it's going to fall to death is it poverty that you're facing it's going to fall to death so hold that bread in your hand look at it and say the body of jesus and look at that grape juice when it comes across say the blood of christ and go on begin to eat it let's participate in this holy communion slowly chew it eat it remember it was not meant to be a tasty meal yeah it was not meant to be a tasty meal sorry they should start already i've told them to start already as you're eating of it as you're drinking of it i am prophesying to you your enemy is falling to death right now that sickness is falling to death in the mighty name of jesus mighty name of jesus i want you to picture the enemy of your life is being terminated right now do you remember jesus said i will make a table before your enemies hallelujah a banquet before your enemy psalms 23 this is the banquet before your enemies god loves you to celebrate a banquet while your enemies are being trampled down amen, amen. this is your banquet tonight this is the passover meal this is the last supper the body and the blood of jesus christ thank you jesus thank you jesus i declare the end of the enemies in your life end of egypt in your life end of the horses and the chariots that is coming after you that threatening that is coming after you that harassment that has been harassing you that control those controlling spirits monitoring spirits those demons cannot come after you after tonight in the name of jesus christ of nazareth that sickness is defeated cancers are defeated in the mighty name of jesus every enemy against your life against your mind against your body against your soul is destroyed is destroyed as you're enjoying your meal your enemies are being destroyed tonight this is a divine appointment it's an appointment you are here by appointment you are here by appointment today your enemies had to be terminated in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord go ahead eat that passover meal chew it eat it mighty name of jesus
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. God wants to treat his children like royalty while he is dealing with his enemies. Amen. He wants to give you a party, a banquet while he is destroying your enemies. This is God's way of doing. Hallelujah. This is how God wants to treat, treat you. He wants to treat you like a royalty because you are a royalty. You are a child of God. Amen. The father does things in style. Amen. He is a royalty. Amen. Hallelujah. He is giving his children a banquet in the presence of his enemies. I will give you a banquet in the presence of your enemies. In the presence of your enemies. Your cup shall run over. Hallelujah. Can I tell you a good news? Whatever has been destroying you has been defeated in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been fighting you has come to an end tonight. Your stagnation has ended tonight. Your poverty has ended tonight in the name of Jesus. That sickness, that disease has left your body. It has left your generation in the mighty name of Jesus. Your enemies are destroyed. Pharaoh is destroyed. The seed is destroyed. This is the Passover night. Before this night ends, the armies, the chariots, the horses, mighty men of valor have been defeated, drowned forever, drowned forever. Your threatenings, you will not hear anymore. These Egyptians you see, you will not see them anymore. Hallelujah. 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 It's a night of independence. It's a night of deliverance. It's a night of deliverance. The night of deliverance. Night of deliverance. You are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are set free in the name of Jesus. You can never be poor another day. You can never be defeated another day. Today you are entering from Egypt into the promises of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 The Lamb of God. He has prevailed. The Lamb of God has taken your place. Deliverance has come upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Celebrate your deliverance. Celebrate your victory. Celebrate it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All your enemies have been drowned, defeated. Thank you, Lord. A night like this, it's called as when God helps you. A night like this is called when God helps you. Tell your neighbor, tell three people around, this is how it is when God helps you. This is how it is when God helps you. This is how it is when God helps you. come with strange testimonies because you have come into 
a moment of favor. Passover night is when God is going to fight for you. Passover night is when God helps you. Passover night is when you are celebrating and the enemies are defeated. Hallelujah! This is your night of deliverance. Everyone online, receive it. Receive it all around the world. 32 nations, receive the deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise be to the Lord. Let's be seated in the presence of Jesus. Someone shout and say, this is my night of deliverance. This is how it is when God helps. Amen. Amen. Soon after the meal, Jesus stepped aside and he took a basin, filled it with water, took a towel in his hand and stooped down and began to wash his disciples' feet. Began to wash the disciples' feet. You know what made Jesus do that, that night? Right after the meal, the disciples were sitting and talking, who is greatest after Jesus? They began to talk and say, after Jesus, is it Peter? Is it John? Is it you? Is it me? Big discussion. Jesus was hearing them. He didn't say a word. He showed them who is the greatest. Hallelujah. He simply took a bucket while they were still discussing. Hot discussion going on. Who next? He didn't give an answer. He took a bucket, kept it aside. They're still talking. Who is the greatest? He took a towel. He gritted his robe, tied it, and stooped down. And began to wash and wipe one of the disciples' feet. Peter shocked. No, Lord. No. Hallelujah. But then Jesus said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you have no part with me. Amen. If you don't let me wash your feet, you have no part with me. An extreme statement. They have been with Jesus for three years. They are committed. Highly committed to be the disciples of Jesus. To be the apostles of Jesus. But when it came just before... A day before graduation. They've studied four years. Passed every exam. Finished everything. That's just the day before graduation. Jesus said, if this one thing you don't allow me, you're dismissed. No, no graduation for you. Get out of the college. You have no part. Hallelujah. Extreme treatment. What about all that they did, Lord? They have learned how to heal, how to cast out demons. They have learned the mysteries of the kingdom. But he said, no, all that is okay. But this one thing offends me. If you don't let me do this, you have no part. Extreme statement. Jesus was willing to forgive all sins. But if you don't let me do this, you have no part. Why, Lord? You're willing to forgive all sins. But this is a small thing. I'm telling you, you don't wash my feet. I will wash yours, Lord. Don't let me. You have no part. Hallelujah. He said, I did not come to be served. I came to serve. Amen. And he said, let him know 
that the greater will serve the younger because man sinned but god came down <laughs> man sinned god was punished in the kingdom of god the greater serve the younger hallelujah esau had to serve jacob amen everyone had to serve joseph father mother brothers hallelujah and the kingdom of god greater serve the younger that means it's very easy to grow in the kingdom of god it's very easy to grow in the kingdom of god the more you go down the more he lifts you up <laughs> so easy so easy to grow in the kingdom of god the more you go down the more he is going to award you lift you up establish you celebrate you amen and he said do this among yourselves let's go read that scripture we have come almost to the end of this service watch this john 13 12 to 15 let's read it oh this is after let's go to 5 sorry let's go to 5 and let's read from 5 onwards after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples feet and to wipe them and with the towel with which he was girded girded next Then he came to Simon Peter and Peter said to him Lord are you washing my feet Jesus answered and said to him what I'm doing you do not understand now but you will know after this Peter said to him you shall never wash my feet Jesus answered him if I do not wash you you have no part with me Simon Peter said to him Lord not my feet only but also my hands and my head jesus said to him he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet but is completely clean and you are clean but not all of you for he knew who would betray him therefore he said you are not all clean so when he had washed their feet taken his garments and sat down again he said to them do you know what i have done to you you call me teacher and lord and you say well for so i am if i then your lord and teacher have washed your feet you also ought to wash one another's feet for i have given you an example that you should do as i have done for you i have given you as example amen what should be done washing feet or serving another hallelujah the reason I have this kind of a service once in a few years because if I repeat it next year it becomes a ritual. We all come to wash feet in the special service. No. It is for you to take a message today that our life's purpose is to serve one another. is to serve one another i was hungry you never gave me food i was naked you never clothed me i was in the prison you did not visit me and the righteous asked him lord when were you hungry or naked or in the prison if you if we knew jesus was hungry i mean we would have bought the whole shop to 
he said but in the least of these you didn't do it to the least of these hallelujah so jesus represented he said if you do it for the least of these people you have done it for me it's a powerful important commandment teaching that we often forget you often forget the church has become a marketplace where people are just busy coming to get get and get get and get how much can i get how much can i get is this deliverance meeting i'm coming brother normal meeting i'll come next time because we all want to get 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 but jesus said this is what i want you to take as my me as example that you will serve one another amen do you know you haven't arrived into christianity if you haven't served another amen we haven't started yet you haven't started a life in christ if you have not served another which way stoop down and wash their feet that means is the least lowest type of work that someone can do amen so today i want all of us to take this message to your heart and make a decision god i know one side you will lift me up you will make me a king and a queen you will make me a winner you will make me a leader you will make me a blessing but i on the other side will get down and sir don't confuse the both for many thousand years wrong sermons have gone out loud into the world because they can only take one side they say no we will only serve or they no we will only be kings no no jesus said i am the king of kings you rightly said i am the lord and i am the teacher yes that's who i am but watch what your lord does so you are called to be a lord you are called to be rich you are called to be prosperous you are called to be a blessing yes but look what the lord does amen imagine you come down and get down a rolls royce and get down go help that beggar you carry him make him sit feed him clean him up give him some money go tell him go to the barber shop or take a do something wear some new clothes amen and then you go back in the rolls hallelujah that's being the lord and being like the lord <laughs> hallelujah so just for breaking the ice breaking pride breaking ego we are going to practice it hallelujah just to break the pride in us that never lets us see another person and serve right we forget what what takes that place you know you know how we forget why we forget pride of life gets into us why should i do if i show my finger 10 people will come and do that's okay even jesus could point his finger the whole jerusalem will come and do but he stooped down amen so just to break that ice break that pride we're going to wash one another's feet now are you ready yes are you ready yes so who does to who that's a question jesus did it to his disciples amen you must try hard to find someone at least in age wise little less than you hallelujah but let the lord lead you we are a small gathering tonight not all have come so it's a easily manageable situation for decency say let the men deal with the men woman with the woman so there is no room for confusion 
Hallelujah. But this practice, when you stoop down, you wash their feet. Um, and not necessarily.